Hello YouTube and welcome to um, this uh, review and demonstration video. Um, this is going to be of the all new uh, Dyson Dockwright machine which I um, just purchased. I've had a uh, chance now to unbox it, uh, put it together and have a run round with it and, uh, and see what I think about it, learn all about its features. And um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing um, a review, so we're going to be looking at all the features and then we're going to do a demonstration of it on carpets, I'll be pushing it on the hard floors, I'll be putting some dirt down on the hard floor, also on the carpet in here. We're going to test its agitation ability and uh, we're going to see how the uh, tools do as well. Now unfortunately this is not the animal version, this is the multi-floor version so it doesn't come with the mini turbo brush or the tangle free turbine tool. Uh, what I understand as well is that the older ones from the older machines will not fit this machine. So if you wanted the tangle free tool with this you would need to buy the animal version which currently is uh, a lot more expensive than this so I wasn't going to uh, spend that much more money. Uh, there is one sold on the Argos website, uh, an anti uh, tangle free turbine tool but from what I can understand it won't fit on this machine because it's got an all new design of, um, of tool that fits into the hose is that the old tools from previous models of Dyson will not fit this machine. Okay. So I wouldn't go buying accessories off Argos and then expecting them to work with this because from what I understand uh, they will not function correctly. So um, this is also known as the UP22, like previous Dysons had a uh, code number like the DC40, DC41, DC56, DC40, you know, um, this doesn't use the DC number anymore, it's called the UP22 and it's called the Dyson Light Ball and it's the multi-floor as I say, it was bought from Argos and um, this currently is their latest offering and is the replacement for the DC40 Mark II. It looks very similar to the DC40, but it does come with uh, some quite substantial differences to the DC40. And we're going to look at those in this video. So, I've already done the unboxing video, which is immediately preceding this video on my channel, where we get it out of the box and uh, assemble it, put it all together, and I give my first impressions, which were generally pretty good for this. Having had a chance now to push it round and see how it works on the hard floors, I must say that I am pretty impressed with it so far for a Dyson. And uh, I'm very rapidly changing my opinion of what I thought about modern Dysons, because I haven't bought a new one of these since 2006, when I last bought that one over there, which was the original DC-15, which was the very first ball they ever brought out. So, without further ado, let's get the camera down and start looking at this machine and all its features. Okay, so what we can see here then is the, uh, the Dyson light ball in uh, all its glory. This has only been available for a couple of months and uh, it's the all new, all singing, all dancing uh, floor head on here, which is the epicyclic drive that they're um, going on about. Um, and let's start in my usual style with the reviews from the top of the handle. So what we've got here is the, uh, the suction um, wand cap, which basically hinges up as on previous models. The wand and hose forms part of the handle as, again, very similar to the, the DC40. The cable fits onto the back of the machine and here you've got your top cable hook and your bottom one down here at the bottom of the hose. Uh, the cable on this is 9.4 metres long so it's not far off being 10 metres so it's a nice generous length. What we can do is to use the, the quick release on the top here just to drop the cable off and that all comes free. We can see that um, the cable exits the machine from roughly halfway down at the uh, top of the cyclone housing so there's none of the where it comes out of the bottom on other machines which is very annoying. That's actually reasonably good. I would have liked it a little bit higher but we can't have everything. That's an okay place to exit the cable. Right, okay. Now the hose and the, the wand on this, like on the DC40, forms part of the handle. In order to get the hose off, we first of all lift our cap and then we lift off the red part here, tipping the hose back and we can then reel the hose out of the machine, like so. If I just put the camera down on here, on the side, we can see, let me just uh, Angle that down. 
The hose is rather long. It is a, a good length on this machine. So when we stretch it out, Dyson say this will go up a flight of stairs. I haven't tried it on my stairs yet, but um, I don't think it does, to be honest. It's a nice long hose. You've got a nice long extension on it as well, but I don't think this would stretch fully up a flight of stairs. It would be neatly there, but I don't think it would go all the way up. So your hose exits from the bottom of the machine, which is um, like most Dyson's would, so it uh, increases the stability. Uh, you can remove your wand. I think the wand will then turn round. Will it clip in from this end? No, it won't. So you aren't able to reverse it and push it in that way. You have to have the wand if you want the extension on and use that as the handle, like so. Okay? Now, that obviously removes from there and then you can use your tools on the end of the hose. So, the tools themselves, let me just uh, have a look and see if we can see this. What we get, basically, is we get the... Um, one single tool which stores on the side of the machine and that is your um, upholstery tool which is here and uh, this here has a little button on which enables this to click firmly onto the hose. Now this apparently is uh, different from previous designs in that they didn't have the button actually on the tool so it will, it will enable this to go, will it go into here? Yes it will. So the, it pushes into the end of the hose and then clicks in like that. So it's nice and secure in the, in the end of here and I think that's actually quite good. So you've got a nice, uh, nice cuff that you can hold on to there and your tool slots straight into the end and has its release actually built onto the tool. And then you just press the knob, uh, press the button on the tool and you can take it off the hose. So that's the um, upholstery tool, it's got the, um, the lint lifter on the back there so you'd use that for cleaning your stairs and upholstery. Like I say this doesn't come with a mini turbo tool or the tango, tangle free, you'd need to purchase the animal machine to get that. Now also we have the, um, the long crevice tool and also the dusting brush or you can use that to do your blinds or anything else. That slides down and can slide off if you need it to slide off so it comes in two parts. So you've got a nice length crevice tool here with uh, suction relief holes in the end, like so. And again it comes with the little button here that will secure it into the hose cuff. So we can push it in and click it in like so. Now I don't know whether it will go in the other way. No it won't. It will only go in that way so your little button goes into the recess and clicks in nicely. So that's, that's actually very good. I do like that to be honest. And then we will find that our dusting brush won't go in into the end of here. It has to go on the end of here. So it looks like you need to have... Um, and it will click onto the end of here like so. But it's, it makes it rather long then with this, uh, with this on the end. I would have liked to have seen the dusting brush being able to push directly into the end of here. But it doesn't, which is a bit, which is a bit unfortunate. But there we go, that's how the uh, tools fit onto the end of the hose, like so. You don't have to take that off, you can slide that back there and just use the crevice tool like this, but really you'd want to use it like that, wouldn't you, to get into tight space. It's a good length crevice tool. It's a nice quality one as well. Right, so let's just remove that. So we've, we've gone into the details of the hose here. So what I'll do now is I'll just replace the hose on the back of the machine. So again, what we do is just slot the hose back into here, slide it down and then we would push the, the cuff back onto the top of the handle and push the wand cover down like so. Now taking the camera back off here again what we have in the kit, and I showed you how to do this when we first had the, um, the unboxing, is that we have our little uh, holder for the tools, which basically slides onto the side of the, the case here, onto the side of the spine, and clicks in at the bottom. And then our long tool will fit onto there, like so. Um, let's just get the upholstery tool. And the upholstery tool 
unlike the DC40, which had a dedicated space for it down here, has to go on top of here, like so. Now, that sometimes interferes with the cable as you're wrapping it round the back, but as long as you, well, I find it, you know, if I just turn it like this, then you can put the cable on the back without it interfering too much with this. So, that's the hose and that's the tool that you come with, and I think that's a reasonably good tool. I think Dyson's come quite a long way, you know. They are, uh, they're better than what they used to be. So, going down here now, what we've got is the, uh, the on-off switch here. This is the main switch that turns the machine on, and then here you've got your brush roll on and off switch. Now when you turn the machine on for the first time, the default setting is that this brush roll will be turned on each time you turn the machine on. So when you turn it on and recline the machine, whether, regardless of whether you're on hard floor or carpets, that will always come on. What this does is basically switch it off. So if you're using this on hard floors all the time, you're going to find this to be a little bit annoying, is that every time you turn the machine on, you're going to have to constantly keep pressing this to turn the brush roll off. In other words, brush roll on is the default position when you turn the machine on. All right. Here's the bin. Now this bin's a 1.6 litre capacity. It contains the max line, which is just here. It's very similar to the DC40 bin in that uh, in order to empty it, you have to press this button on the top and you press it nice and hard and then the bottom drops down like so. So again, that's very, very similar. You've got your little chute here where the outer, outer side of it is where the fine dust forms and the inner part comes through the hole at the bottom and that's your suction in basically from the motor down there. Unlike the kinetic machines, which in my opinion I prefer this type um, over the filterless ones, I always like to have a machine with a pre-motor filter. As long as you've got that little bit of protection for the motor, that's a really good thing as far as I'm concerned. I don't like the kinetic style. But in order to get to the filter, you need to just basically do what you did with the DC40, lift this tab, hinge it back, and then you can take your sock filter out, like so. Dyson recommend that you wash that every month and you also have to wash the exhaust filter as well. We'll go into that in a short while. So that basically fits down inside there and closes up. So it's every month for that. I've shown how to basically to empty the bin. Now what we can also do is to take the bin off as well to get the shroud clean. So we can drop the bin like so and then what we would do is we would let me see, how, how do we get this off? Uh, we press this button, I believe. Press this button, turn that round and drop it down. So it's the grey button is the shroud release, the bin release off the shroud. And then what we can do when we've got that off is use our dusting brush there to basically brush the shroud down and get all the dirt off there, OK? Because you want to keep that shroud as clear as we can because that's where the suction comes through, right? So what we need to do in order to put it back in is first of all raise the top until it clicks into that little tight that little hole there clicks into the little plastic lug on the front. I'm assuming the camera can see that, I hope it can. So once that's clicked in, then we bring the back up and click it onto the little grey button there, and then we close the bottom of the bin like so. So that's emptying the bin dealt with, very easy and very, very much the same as on previous models. Now, on the back, underneath the bin, we have our little um, clearance port. Now, this basically is the anti-blockage port. It's got a clear front, but this one here actually has a screw, so you need to remove that screw at the bottom to be able to take this off. Blockages from the floor head, which are inside the ball, as in previous machines, are going to be in this internal hose. And what we can do to remove a blockage from that internal hose is to turn the cleaner over onto its back, like so. And then what we can do is we can lift this, and we can lift it up, like so, and then you can get down into that little hose to remove your blockages. Right? And then putting it back on is simply it slots back into there and pushes back down again. So that's how you'd remove a blockage from your internal hose down the bottom. 
the internal hose comes up here to a changeover valve basically which decides whether it's going to come through the hose or from the floor head. That's done automatically as on previous models. Right, so the exhaust filter on this machine is basically in the side here. And what we can do to remove that is to turn it over. Again, I'll just put this up on the side and focus down. So we need to be taking off this cover as on previous models. Undo your little screw and then you lift off the cover and then what we do is you take the filter, turn it through a quarter of a turn anti-clockwise and lift off. Okay, so we have a very, it's different uh, I believe to the old one in that it has the um, a plastic foam ring insert in here and then you can see a filter media underneath there and on the back it's got like a, a foam filter built on as well. Now this is fully washable, this exhaust filter. So you haven't got to think about constantly buying new ones of these because this is a washable filter. And that's a good idea and Dyson say that you need to do this every month as well. But I, I don't think that would be strictly necessary as long as you kept your bin clean and your pre-motor clean. This shouldn't be getting that dirty that it needs cleaning every month. So we slot that back in here. And then what we do is we have a little arrow on here with a little peg inside and another little arrow on the housing here. Okay, so we line the arrows up basically, turn it clockwise through about an eighth of a turn and then when the arrows have lined up there it's in position. That's a seal system, it's got a rubber seal underneath so it shouldn't leak out suction around the side because this gets an A rating for exhaust emissions which is very good. So in other words, it's a HEPA filtered machine. And then all we do is we put our ball back on the top, as on previous machines. Again, it can be a little bit fiddly that can, as long as you line it up. Turn our little control. Like so, until it makes that noise. In which case you can't uh, tighten it up anymore. Now, the floor head on this machine is what they call the epicyclic drive. Now this has a very wide brush roll like on the, uh, the DC50. The way we take the floor head off is very very simple on this machine. You would basically press this button backwards and remove the thing directly towards you like so and that removes the floor head from the machine. Now we're going to look at the floor head in a bit closer detail. So what we've got is this, uh, it's a brand new style, never featured on a machine before, and uh, this has what we call a multi-function uh, switch on the front. Now this is basically adjustable according to what you need to do with the machine. On the front we have two large debris channels. One is here, and one is here. And you can see the scoops there on the side, which direct the dirt. There, you can see the scoops through these passages here. Now, in these passages are two shutters, one here and one here. Also on the top are two air bleed valves, one there and one there. And they take uh, suction from inside the floor head basically through those little tiny vents, and I can't know if you can see that or not, but there are little tiny vents inside here, those vents, and what, when this is in a certain position, those vents open and allow excess suction to vent out of the top of the floor head through these here. Now, in the centre uh, setting, what we have is that those vents on the top are closed, okay? So it's not drawing it, it's not allowing the suction to leak through those vents. But the shutters on the front are open. 
So your large debris channels are open and available for larger things. Say you drop some dried peas on the floor or some cornflakes or some uh, rice particles and stuff like that. I mean, it's not going to have massively uh, large stuff to pass through here. But it's for, you know, your general stuff that you drop on a hard floor, you know, that might not otherwise fit underneath. So that's the sort of setting you'd use to, to a general setting to clean a hard floor where your front paths are open and uh, your top ones are closed. Now, if you were going to use this on carpet and uh, you were finding it a little bit hard to push round, what you could do is to push this to that side, to the minor side. And what that does, it brings down the two shutters across the large debris channel. In other words, you're going to be using it on carpet. You don't really need these large debris channels for a carpet. So they basically come down. What it also does is opens these valves here and you'll be able to feel the air being, when you're pushing it along, being drawn in through here. So, in other words, it makes it a little bit less hard to push around on a longer pile carpet. It doesn't have that down force against the carpet that makes things hard to push. Um, it also works on hard floor as well. So basically, you're doing there, but then you're likely to get snow ploughing happening because you've closed off the large debris channels on the front. Now, going the other way is your plus setting. Now what that does, if you're using it on a short pile carpet and there's a lot of debris in the carpet, it's sort of deep down, you want a really deep down clean and you don't want any air escaping around the side of the, uh, the floor head, that closes off the top valves here and it also closes off the large debris channels as well so that effectively all the full power of suction from the machine is coming through this part here. There's no leakage through the front or the top it all comes through here. You've got two side collection uh, channels there which are always open. Those are for uh, side suction when you're going up against a skirting board. Say you're on a hard floor and you're going up against a, uh, a skirting board, it would draw the suction through here. Because this does not edge clean up to that point there on that side, but it cleans closer to the edge on this side, which is rather good. It does have good edge cleaning. You've got your little roller casters underneath here. These brushes are fairly stiff and they're fairly dense. So with problems with the DC50 that they had, where they had the carbon fibre filaments plus these type as well, they were finding that some of these brush rolls were wearing out very quickly and the carbon fibre filaments were all breaking off. So they don't include it on this head. It's basically, this is a, a, a cylindrical tube like a toilet roll and it fits over the top of the motor. And I'll show you now what we do about cleaning the brush roll. Because Dyson has basically given you a, um, a feature where if you press this button on the side, this grey button, and then you hinge the side up like so, and then what you can do is just to pull it all the way out of the cleaner like this. And then what we've got is the brush roll out of the machine and there's the end cap with the bearing on and you can look in there and it's basically a hollow tube with the drive at the end or like a, an engagement uh, for the drive you can't see into there because it's a little bit dark uh, but basically if you just look down the bottom of there we can see there's a peg on the bottom which engages with the end of the motor which is here inside that housing is the brush roll motor okay as that turns it turns this peg on the end, which is basically the, the drive spindle. And that engages with the end of this brush roll to turn the brush roll round. That's a very similar design to what we get on the DC50. But having the ability to very, very easily remove that brush roll to remove wrapped around hair, I think that's a very good idea. And it's very similar to what SIBO do on their machines, especially with the Felix, where you're able to remove the, the brush roll like so. Now, in order to get it back in, all we would do, let's just focus that down again, is to slide the brush roll back into the end, all the way in, like so, and click that back down. And your brush roll is now back in the cleaner, very easily and very quick to do. And I do like that design, I like that an awful lot. So there we have, effectively, our forehead and again it says light ball and multi-floor 
So you'd be able to take out your brush roll and be able to get a cloth around the back here to clean this out because these will get dirty in a pretty short period of time. They'll get really dirty in here and it won't look as nice. So you'll need to clean the inside of this out. And you're able to do that when you remove the, um, the brush roll from the end. So all we do to put the brush roll back on the machine, basically, is to take the brush roll head, line it back up with the floor head, sorry, with the, uh, the, the, the housing on the machine, and slide it up until it clicks. Very, very simple. So you can easily remove the floor head as and when you need to. So there is the floor head explained in full detail. Um, what else can we talk about on here? Now on the back of the spine here is your stock label and uh, on the unboxing video I showed that in, in close detail but I'll show it again here basically. So there we can see the model number there which is uh, Dyson UP22. There's its serial number. Its um, net weight is 6.9 kilos and it uses 700 watts. So it's a very energy efficient machine and comes well within the 900 watts that the EU has dictated that all vacuum cleaners must be as from August um, of this year. Um, made in Malaysia, which all Dysons are now and have been since 2002. And it's BAAB approved. Right, now let's put the, um, the canister back on the front and again that's just a simple case of lowering it down onto the bottom, onto the rubber seal at the bottom, pushing it back against the back of the housing until it clicks in place. To recline the machine all we would do, let's pull the uh, cable out of the way. With this machine, what you don't need to be doing is putting your foot on the head and pulling it back. You don't need to do that on these because all it will do is strain the head. With this type of machine, it's um, you push down on the top of the handle and then bring the machine back, like so, into the recline position. So literally it's a downward pressure on the handle, press it down and pull it back. You don't need to be putting your foot on the front of there. I've seen people doing that on these things and you shouldn't do it. It's not designed to be done like that. And then you can wheel it round, side to side movement of your hand, on the handle, and you can steer it wherever you want, which is the usual way that you work one of these ball machines. And that goes back obviously right back to the very first ones which worked in the same way on the DC-15, and you'd use the top handle from side to side. Okay, now just before we end this video, I'm going to do the actual demonstration of the machine because we've taken so long over doing the, um, the explanation of the parts I'm going to have to do another video which is going to follow on from this and then we're going to be putting some particles down and seeing how it picks up. But just for fun, before I end this video, I'm going to put the old DC-15 side by side with the new one and we'll have a look and see just how much difference there is. And we can see from this just how sleeker and narrower the all new model for 2017 is compared to the very original ball which was released in 2006. So on the right you've got the DC-15, they're around about the same height, the DC-15 is marginally taller than the light ball. The bin on the DC-15 was an awful lot bigger you can see that, the difference in size. That was a full-size ball. And a lot of people complained on the original one that it was big, heavy and bulky. And it is. So Dyson now are making their cleaners much smaller, much more compact and much lighter than they did originally. Okay? So there we have it. That is all the features and how to use, basically, how to set up the new Dyson light ball which is now available in shops and is the replacement for the DC40 and on the next video I'll be pushing it round and we'll see it in action so until then I'll see